Welcome to Democratically Speaking. Mark Lindy, your host. I'm the chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, and I am here with City Councilor at Large, Shana Barnes. Shana, welcome. Thank you. Thank Good you for having you. me. Um, you're going for round two. I am. Re election. Yes. Okay. First of all, a lot of people know you, uh, star of stage, screen, and television. <laughs> City Council every Monday night, <laughs> so there's the TV part, right. the screen part. I've seen you. You're really good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, tell us the Shane of Barnes story to someone that doesn't know you. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I was born in Washington, D.C. My dad was a professional basketball player. My mom uh, was a teacher. They uh, met in D.C., got married. My mom is originally from here. Uh, she's one of the Williams children from the old east side, Bay Street and all those streets that I've only heard about. Um, and after some time, they divorced, and uh, my mom came back home because her family's here, and uh, I was raised here um, from the age of four to today. <laughs> and I attended um, Brockton public and private schools. I graduated from Connell Spellman, went off to Northeastern University, and uh, got my degree in criminal justice, and then went back um, for postgraduate studies in justice administration. I came out of college and. Uh, my first job was actually at the Plymouth County DA's office. I was a victim witness advocate, mm -hmm. and uh, right here in Brockton. And um, after that, I went to DYS, and I was uh, posted right at the Day Reporting Center right on Bolton Street. Mm -hmm. After that, I went to um, DSS, or DCF is now, right on Mulberry Street. And after that, I uh, now I currently work for Congressman Stephen Lynch uh, right on West Elm Street. So I'm, <laughs> I'm a Brockton girl. Um, working, living, as the, the new slogan says, working, living, and playing here in Brockton. So, um, virtually my whole life, since I can, since I knew myself, I've been here in Brockton, and um, I've enjoyed just everything about it. Just the, the the changes, the people, my friends, family, everything. It's really been good. It's good, good for me. Well, they just had that reunion for Salisbury Park with right. all the folks from that neighborhood. Right. And that was a very, if you think about it, Brockton's always been a diverse place. Okay, mm -hmm. that neighborhood. There were Jewish butchers over there. Right. There was a temple over there. Right. And 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 the whole African American community. Brockton right. is a big melting pot. Right. Right now, it's just different people. Right. It, it, if you think about Brockton, you know, Irish, African American, mm -hmm. Jewish, Lithuanian, you name it. That's right. the Greek. plus about this city. Right. Okay. Right. People like to beat up our city a little too much, in right. my opinion. You're 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 a good cheerleader for this city. You love Brockton, right. especially because you really. Haven't left. You know, that's the thing too. Just my experience and from my perspective, I've not really known anything else. So, and I often think sometimes, I think, you know, how would my life have been different had I made some other choices or moved away or gone and, and done other things? And I, I can't even imagine it. I can't imagine not being who I am. Everything that I am and how I'm shaped, how I'm developed. I truly and firmly believe uh, is based on my experience and my living here in the city. Brockton is a very different city from other cities and in this position and, and actually too in my federal position with Congressman Lynch, I see how other cities and how other uh, uh, towns are run. Brockton is very, very different. We are extremely unique and if you were to take an aerial view of the area, it almost kind of sets itself apart from how even our closest surrounding towns, Avon, the Bridgewaters, all those other places mm -hmm. that touch our border, we, we behave and we act a whole lot different and we, we manage ourselves a whole lot different, but it works for us in a greater scale. We're a city of 100,000 and some change people, so we're going to have challenges. No place has no challenge. Even you know some of the more suburban, affluent towns, they also have challenges as well. But we get by them. We stick together and we come through it, and we come through it stronger. Why did you run to begin with two years ago? What did you feel that you had to contribute okay. that someone else wasn't going to contribute? And what got you to go kind of right for the top in a way? You went right for council mm -hmm. at large. You didn't do a ward council or right. a school committee or right. anything like that. Tell us why. Right, and two years ago um, that question was uh, posed to me several times and it, I actually uh, started to think about running for public office two years prior to my first uh, term coming up now. So I was just talking with some friends and, and again, you know, I'm, I'm in the political arena. That's what we do. We do policy. We do uh, um, constituent services. That's what I do. I'm a district representative here uh, for Congressman Lynch. So 
I was already kind of in that mix in mm -hmm. doing the work and doing the public servant work, just not in my own name. Right. You know, I was the representative for Congressman Lynch. So, and speaking with a friend of mine, we just we were just kind of tossing it around, and she was just like, you know, she's like, I think you'd really be good at, as a, a, a city councilor or doing something as Shayna Barnes, representing the people as Shayna Barnes, and. I started to become a little bit more intimately involved with the council, attending the meetings and, and developing friendships with them because of my constituent service work. Uh, and the, mayor, the two mayors at the time, Jim Harrington and um, Linda Belzotti at the time, and becoming familiar with them. And I started to think, I feel that I, I and at the time, um, this was my, my train of thought, I had a different perspective that had never been exposed uh, on the council before. It, the, the the things that I had been exposed to again, you know, with my job and, and some of the relationships that I built, uh, the professional and the personal relationships that I built with other agencies that you know uh, are directly and indirectly involved in the workings and the management of the city of Brockton, I realized I could use those to help my my neighbors, my friends, the residents in my own name, and the reason why I. I um, I thought about maybe, because uh, I live in Ward 5, I live over on Court Street, and I thought about maybe uh, running for Ward 5, but then I thought about it too. How selfish of me if I feel that I have these resources that would benefit a particular area, why not for the whole city? Mm -hmm. And um, I, that's, that's what I did. That's, um, we devised a plan. And I realized that, you know, I really think I can do this. I think I would be good at it. I feel I have been good at it. The feedback I've been getting from um, folks in, in, in the city, uh, they say that I'm, you know, doing very well. And I appreciate that. So I'm hoping to continue. Now, you're not afraid at a city council meeting no. to <laughs> ask tough questions or even ask a question if you don't understand something. Absolutely. One thing I notice is like, you will say... Um, Just to be clear. Just to be clear. Let me be clear, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's a trademark. Yeah. That's a Shana Barnes <laughs> trademark. Yeah, I okay. learned that. I learned that, yeah. Okay. You don't pretend to actually know the answer. You will ask the question, mm -hmm. and sometimes department heads and people that come before you really don't want to be asked the question, okay? Mm -hmm. It's an interesting role. You might even ask the question of the CEO, the mayor of the city, or mm -hmm. the CFO, the chief financial officer. Mm -hmm. um, talk about that a little bit. Sure. In addition to our role as, you know, kind of holding the purse strings and, and managing the budget and, and approving the money that, that uh, comes in and goes out of the city, our job is to be a fact finder. Our job is to bring the concerns of the people to that chamber. So if someone calls me or they send me an email, which a lot of the constituents do, it's my job to bring that forward. Th that's, those are their questions as well as my questions. I go in there you know, as Shayna Barnes city councilor, and I sit at my seat that has my name on it, but I also go in there as Shayna Barnes from Court Street that wants to know the answer to this question. So, and I mean, I, I, you know, realizing that all of the, the agendas, they're available online. And when I look at some of those things, it's general things that people want to know, and they may, not have, they, may not, they may not necessarily have the opportunity to ask. And that's my role. That's what I'm supposed to do. And I make sure that when I go in, we, we get, you know, our materials and our packets and things, and I read them through. There are some things in there that I won't understand. This is all still very new. It's, it's only been two years. So I never profess to know everything, how things are, are run. I'm learning, and that's what I did. I learned this, this, uh, this term on how things work. There's no manual. There's no conference. There's no book. There's no anything really to teach you how to be an effective city councilor and how to be an effective public servant. That's why I went in, and I, I didn't have a whole lot of initiatives. I didn't come in gangbusters, and we need to change this, we need to change that. That was never my strategy. What I wanted to do was to come in and to learn. And just because I'm sitting there and I'm learning doesn't mean that I won't contribute. If I feel that I have something to contribute to a particular issue, I will share it. And the whole, you know, just to be clear uh, thing, I, I just want to make sure that everybody understands, like, just so that I understand what you're saying and that you understand what what uh, what um, I'm trying to ask you, so that there's no misinterpretation. That's the worst thing that can happen when you get something uh, really big that has to do with the city, with money or contracts or anything, is to have something misinterpreted. So when I when we go you know forward to to the council meeting and we actually have to vote on an issue, I go back actually to my notes. I don't know if anybody's ever seen me, but I pull out my uh, the finance meeting notes and I have it right there next to the two agendas, so I can see what we talked about in the notes I made uh, in the, the meeting prior so that I know what to vote on now. If I said no last week, I say no this week. If I said yes this week, 
I'll say yes uh, on the final vote. So that's how I make sure I check myself and I have my own checks and balances and I sleep very well because I know that what I'm doing um, I feel is for the, the betterment of the people and it's, it's what the people are asking me to do. And we just had the debate um, for Council at Large. Right. Twelve of the thirteen people participated. Right. Um, one came and left. <laughs> uh, we'll leave that alone. Okay. Um, you mentioned, you talked about something that's kind of, uh, 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 I guess, a pet project of mine as well, mm -hmm. the community-wide meeting uh -huh. that we did uh, when Council Sullivan was right. the council president. Now, first time I ever got invited as an elected official right. from Southeastern to even participate. We don't even get sworn in with you guys. Right. We, get, right. we go to the city clerk's office, sign the book, and raise our right hand, and it's a private ceremony. Right. First time we were included, Wayne and I, right. the school committee, school committee kind of gets like, you know, second class citizenship mm -hmm. from time to time. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. do a lot of hard work too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they have ward meetings, PAC meetings, Absolutely. all that. Um, do you think that's important, the communication aspect of it, and uh, is that something you would seek to try to bring back? Absolutely. And, and I, I don't really know why they kind of, uh, they were suspended, um, but I'm, I'm sure that our next council president next year, um, that they will probably try to bring that back, depending on who that person is. But I thought it was um, really helpful, and especially being new. That was a way to kind of get all of the information at once and to be able to filter it through and to, you know, I feel to be successful in my term because that gave the residents a chance to come and to give their concerns um, and it also gave us a chance to be able to hear people and to, to communicate one-on-one -on -one and, like you said, to have everybody involved. What, what is it, 60, 62, 65 percent of the Brockton uh, students that are at Southeastern right yep, now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's something that people need to see. And I mean, again, I've used this, this term too, and as you know, to collaborate with Southeastern and to kind of bring a little bit more attention to uh, the students and the work that they're doing and, and things that they're doing here so that people can be aware. Oftentimes, you know, we kind of do a, a tunnel vision to, you know, BPS and Brockton Public Schools. I personally feel they're one of the best school systems in the country. I attended some of the public schools, like I said, but I also at I attended Cardinal Spelman High School, which is a private high school. We have Trinity. We have other private high schools. We have indep um, other private schools that also need to be highlighted. They're also a fabric. They're in the fabric of Brockton, and we take advantage of those things, and those things need to be shared. So um, that was a way to, to start to incorporate the Southeastern uh, 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 School Committee, um, you know, represented by you and Wayne McAllister and the school committee, city council, the mayor, all those people that people want to hear from, they want to touch, they want to talk to. They may otherwise feel intimidated also that right. they may not be able to reach them. So that was a good way to do that. Well, what's interesting is mm -hmm. school committee has hearing of visitors. Mm -hmm. We have hearing of visitors for Southeastern. Mm -hmm. There is no hearing of visitors at the city council. The only time you can be heard is if you're invited to attend. You guys don't have a public comment. Well, section. And right. I've asked that question on a lot of officials over the course of time right. and some people tell me, oh, the meetings would be way longer if that happened. We have it at the library trustees. We limit it. You can't talk for more than X amount of minutes and you can come before. Mm -hmm. Your council meetings are short. Your FinCOMs are long. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but perhaps there's a way to incorporate that into the fabric. I think I, I probably have a few of your colleagues shoot in my direction if I suggest <laughs> that, but I think communication, if you think about town meeting, Mm -hmm. People can go to a town meeting floor and they can speak out. Mm -hmm. Where can they speak out at city council? Well, that's the thing. As I understand it, the process is if you have an issue, you bring it to a counselor, they bring it forth on a resolve, and it gets discussed at the, at the FinCom. Right. So, <coughs> excuse me, there is a process to be heard. And, I mean, I've brought forth several uh, resolves, and, you know, there are actually some in the pipeline that I have coming up as well. It, it, it's a different way to do it than just kind of showing up and signing up or, or doing something of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, as, as it stands right now, that's what's, what has worked. And I'm actually, too, in the process of working with our uh, city clerk and looking at our form of government. Um, we're currently a Plan B government, and we're, we're a changing city. We're an evolving city, and that might need to, to be looked at and might need to change. So you might carry that on. Jay Stewart tried to bring an initiative, and it didn't, it, it didn't happen. It, it, it went by the wayside. He's leaving. Right. You are hoping to return. Well, so. that, that's different. That, what he wanted to do, he just wanted to do the, the government study group. And again, I, supported, I support that as well, and mm -hmm. I'm going to you know, continue to work with him on that. And you know, it's his vision where he wants to go with it. And again, he is retiring you know, sorrowfully. Uh, you know, he's retiring. Um, but 
if that's something that he wants to, to bring forward, then you know, I definitely will work with him on that. But my particular thing is to look at the, at the entire form of government that we have. There are several, several types. Boston's run a little bit different. Some other um, smaller t cities and towns are run a little bit different. We need to look at that. The way that, that we're operating is probably not so much a 21st century operating system. And that's, like I said, I've been working, I've been talking with um, our city clerk and investigating that. It, it may not, that may not even be something, you know. Well, we had a different form of government before. We had a city manager. We had a professional city right. manager back in the day. Right. Um, there are other cities, like you said, right. that might have where your council president is also your mayor. Right. Okay, there's different, we're plan B, there's A, B, C, D, right. E, I think there might even be an F, I'm not sure. Yeah, we haven't but, gone that far but, yet. <laughs> but but it's, it's worth looking into because yeah. it hasn't been looked into, I forget when we had a city manager. My whole life I grew up with manager, with, with councilors and mayors. Right, and right. This, this strong council, weak mayor right. thing and right. balance of power and, and everything like that. Right. Um, what about the relationship between the council and the mayor's office? How, um, I, I think I asked that question during the debate about right. what people can do to keep it a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. If it is adversarial, how to turn it from adversarial into um, collegial. Right. Okay, used to be people would argue to death at city council and yeah. they'd all go out afterwards and have a beer. Right. Okay, right. I'm not 100% sure that happened. I know there's council cords and stuff like that, <laughs> but um, what do you think about that? Has that? I mean, I know you've spoken specifically about that. There have been tough questions that right. you and others have asked, right. and it didn't go over well. Right. Well, you know, and uh, Councilor Sullivan actually brought it up at the debate. Um, coming in, it was tough. It was very bumpy. And again, my perspective was different because I'm new. He's been on there 10 years. So he's seen some of the changes and, so, and some of the shifts and the relationships built and broken down. So coming into the council, one of the first acts of the executive office is, was to sue us. So that immediately kind of p turns people off. I, I don't work well with somebody that wants to sue me for whatever reason. Um, so uh, uh, for me personally, and I can't speak for any of the other councils, but for me personally, that, that initially turned me off. However, since then, I feel that I have tried to you know, be as accessible uh, to the mayor as possible. I've gone and I've, I've met with him. Um, he's, he's asked me to come to the office to meet on, on certain things. I've met with him also at, at my request. He's met with me on some things. Um, and and I, he, he's, been, he's been helpful to me. I think we all kind of had a, a learning process and learning one another and you know, baby steps. It takes baby steps. And especially if you're coming in, him coming into an already established situa situation and making all of the changes that he initially wanted to make, he's going to get some pushback. And that's what happened. And I, I, I don't know if the, if the way that the office reacted to the pushback was appropriate, but I think as time goes on, it will get a little bit better. Um, it just takes time. Two years is not a long time. It really, really isn't. That was my next question yeah. because... You're here you are running again for right. two years. We did, for a short period of time, just for the mayor's office, right. have a four-year term. Right. The guy who had the four-year term is running for councilor at large right now. The guy who held that four-year term, right. who was a school committee member, a right. city councilor, right. I mean a mayor, and now he wants to be a councilor. Right. Um, it will be interesting to be on the other end of the fence. Mm -hmm. I, I maintain, I have a four-year term. Mm -hmm. I, 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 there are some towns that have adopted the city form of government, right. which is a three-year term. Right. Every board and commission That's in Brockton, most of them in Brockton, right. most of the boards and commissions are three years. There's a couple that are five, five years. years. Right. Okay, but right. I think a three, three years is, okay, you learn your first year, right. you hit your stride your second year, right. then you're running your third year. Otherwise, you're continually running for re-election. Right, right. It, and it, it's crazy. Right, and I, I've been exposed to that, you know, in working for Congressman Lynch, because those are also two-year terms. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's more difficult on, on that end, because, you know, trying to manage the... the on the federal level in Washington and then also trying to be responsive to the constituents in the 8th Congressional District. It's very difficult. Um, and, and that's, again, that's something that Tony and I are looking at uh, to, to see how that works. And again, I mean, I, I've heard tale of the four-year mayoral term and how it didn't really last that long and it wasn't very successful. But again, we're in a 21st century time. That might be something that we can work out now. We have, we have different, different folks in leadership. We have different projects that are in the pipeline that need that time. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. A lot of these things, too, that, that we're seeing um, that's getting done, a lot of these things were initiatives that started back with Jim Harrington. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's not 
like you can kind of, I mean, you can come in and, and have ideas and have certain projects that you want to do, like, like I do and I see on your notepad. I think we're going to get to one that I started two years ago that's kind of just now coming into fruition. But it's hard. To, it really, really is hard to be able to do things because things don't happen overnight. Lots of things cost money. Funding takes a long time. God forbid it's a grant. God forbid. So um, it, it, that's something that we're looking at and maybe extending it, um, like you said, to maybe like a three-year or even staggering uh, some of the offices for elections. And, and we're, we're, I'm working with him on that. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm hoping, um, you know, I'd be someone that would want to get involved in that process too. Okay. Um, I'm going to get to your project, okay. but before I do, there's all sorts of issues going on. Some of the same issues that get talked about year and year right. after year. Right. Um, to be perfectly clear, uh -huh. okay, okay. Um, the power plant. Yes. It's a big issue. I know you can't say too much about it because right now you guys are dealing with executive session. Right. The mayor said he settled it. I don't believe the he's council entered, feels that way. He's entered into an agreement. He's entered into an agreement, okay, right. and he had a press conference and he announced what mm -hmm. the agreement was and what resources were going to be but back to the city. Yet. It hasn't been executed yet. It hasn't been executed yet. There's all sorts of side issues that go along with the power right. plant, the wastewater treatment, right. the water commission. Now you get pushed right. back from the people down in, in, in the where Silver Lake is. Right. There's all sorts of issues going on. Right. Your definitive, uh, your definitive statement on you are for it or against it, and what length are you going to go to advocate for your position? From the very beginning, I have been a staunch opponent <laughs> of the power plant for all the same reasons that, that have been talked about for the last 15 years. It's just not right for us. We, I don't think as a city, like I said, like we're a big city and we have really a lot of good things, but we also have our challenges. That's something that I think that would put an unnecessary burden on the people, first of all, of that area and throughout the entire city for, for all kinds of reasons. So uh, it, it's just not appropriate. And again, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the information that's coming in about the money it'll bring in, not all money is good money. And, you know, I, I really admire um, the previous administrations for, first of all, standing up for that in, you know, tough economic times and turning away from that $4 million or so that guaranteed this, that, and the other thing. Nothing is guaranteed. And I, I don't, I personally also don't really feel, like I said before, I have a personal hard time working with somebody or negotiating with somebody who's suing me. So while they, they continue to sue us, and I mean, I've been back and forth to some of the federal court hearings as well, so I've heard some of the argument that, that's kind of been going on. And, and the, the position that they bring forward, I don't know why they want to work with us either. I really don't. If what they're saying is true about the city of Brockton and the people of Brockton, why would they want to come here so bad? Move your project someplace else. No, we, we, don't, we don't want it. There is still a very strong faction that are against it. It may seem like, you know, um, with, with the, the recent publicity and, and the, the campaign that's gone on for it, you would think that things have changed, but nothing has changed. They are very still very much against it, and I stand, I stand firm uh, being against it. But, and I, I do want to say something really quickly, though. Um, there's been a rumor, and I, I heard the rumor, I mean, the streets talk. So I've heard the rumor that um, the Brockton Power folks and um, maybe some other folks have been trying to woo me or to um, entice me to change my position. That is not true. No one has approached me. Uh, no one has, I've not met with anyone. Um, there are several names, some you know, big player names that are involved in that movement that uh, I've heard that have come to me and tried to talk with me. That has not happened. They would be, it would, I, it would behoove them to try to change some of the counselor's position because that's their job, um, but they have not tried to woo me. Are they trying to change it through the election process because you need to look at who's running? It's carefully. possible. Okay, if yeah. you, you, you have a group that's absolutely opposed to the power right. plant, put out a postcard. Right. I was personally surprised to not see your face on that postcard because you have been so staunch. There are certain people that have been very staunch right. and there are other people that seem to have been on the fence. Right. There are new people mm -hmm. that are on there. I've gotten answers like I have to educate myself on right. the project. Well, you know right. what? Uh, voting day is the 22nd. You better be educated by now and you better <laughs> be able to tell me where you stand. It's an issue for me. Right. Uh, there are other issues. Decel. Okay. Right. Where, where do you stand on that? The, I got the 10 minute queue. I think we're about oh. eight and I want to make sure that you get to tell people how they can help you and I want to talk about your project too. Okay. So, but, but other issues like desal. Okay. okay. Uh, if, if I can just respond to one thing about the sure. card, the postcard. Yeah. I got the postcard too. I got it at my job and, and at my house. 
Um, the the uh, organization that put the card out, it's their prerogative. They can support whoever they want. I mean, I know that they continue to use one of my videos that um, says that I am against it. So they've been using that in some of their, their online and social media presence. But it's their prerogative on, on who they support or not. I'm, I, if you have a pro or if somebody wants to ask that, they can ask them. Um, d -cell. no, 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 no. Looking at the proposal, looking at some of the e even some of the things that are unsaid and some of the questions that don't have uh, don't have answers to there, there are too many unknowns with regard to that particular project and we've had so much trouble and honestly too just the way that that the current uh, executive office of that of the of uh, the uh, the aquarium and all those folks the way that they've been acting I don't think it's a good idea for us either um, I think we need to continue to investigate and continue to look into some some other alternatives but sometimes it's not always good to buy the house like you know sometimes you, you just kind of have to continue on and again with regard to the contract and the money that's another issue but with regard to purchasing it no five minute queue is what i got okay, okay so here's the thing okay um, i want to make sure you have time for a closing statement so you can talk to the voters okay. directly and tell them how they can get in touch with okay. you and all that fun stuff um public safety before i go right. that's a big one we need way more than five minutes to talk right. about that you live on Court Street. In You're the at heart. the bottom of the street at right. the heart. I'm up here right. on the other end of Court Street. Right. And it's 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 scary. Okay. As a counselor, as a returning counselor, right. everyone says it's the number one priority. Right. It's gotta be the number right. one priority. What's different? What what do you have to bring to the table that's slightly different than that and what's your perspective on? Okay, quickly. Um, even before I, I came into office, I would have meetings with the chief. I had a meeting with Chief Gomes before, mm -hmm. uh, before he was um, replaced with Chief Hayden. I had several meetings with him, and tomorrow I have a meeting with Chief Crowley. I make sure that I am on, I am as involved in what's going on in our, you know, biggest public safety departments as possible. I've al I also met with Chief Francis and uh, uh, Chief Williams as well, just to make sure that I can know what's going on uh, um, in the streets. And here's my thing. I don't think we should go into this battle scared. If we go in scared and our enemies know that we are afraid, we've already lost. I fully support the Brockton police. They've actually just endorsed me, um, and I fully support their efforts and what they're doing. I'm not going to micromanage how they, how they behave and how they do things. They're getting things done. Those things don't get reported, but the information is available. I support the police. I think they're doing an excellent job. They're getting guns and drugs off the street as quickly as they can. The problem is it's above them. After they arrest, there's really nothing else that, that they can do. Court system. It, right. It has to do with the courts. And again, uh, Tim Cruz, also our DA, he's actually also, he, he's ju just as frustrated as we are because he is trying and his ADAs are trying to prosecute and trying to get these people taken in. It's even above him. So um, those are things that, you know, as a counselor, I, I would definitely continue to support and make sure that I, um, I'm involved with, with that as, as much as they need me. Let's talk about your, your project quick and my weave pet. it into your okay. closing statement. Got it. My pet project. Oh, my goodness. And I have to thank you and I have to thank uh, Superintendent Lopes of uh, Southeastern Regional High School. Uh, we've had a meeting about it. Um, the dog park. A community of 100,000 people. I think there are like 30 or something thousand residents that have uh, dogs. Dogs are walked all over the, the street. We need a place for them, first of all, for the, for the puppies and, and for the, the community to go to be able to possibly build community. How else maybe can somebody from the south side meet somebody from the west side? They might meet there. They may have the same kind of dog. They, they might uh, start a, a training program. They might start to build those relationships so that we, we no longer have all that anon anonymity and isolation in our neighborhoods. It's where people can go and, and they can um, start to develop uh, the relationship. But hopefully we'll have a groundbreaking on that around October, November. That's what we talked about originally. Um, but, but we're still working on that. And again, that's a program that I was talking about two years ago that's just now kind of even being developed. It takes time, and I can't wait for that to happen. Um, but I, I do want to say thank you so much for um, you know taking the time to meet with me and to meet with us all and give us you a get chance. It, you get a minute. Oh, I do. Minute. Look at that camera oh. and give me like ten seconds <laughs> okay, after so good. I can wrap it up. Okay. Um, again, uh, thank you so much, Mark. And I want to thank the the viewers at home, and I want to thank uh, the people that have supported me uh, this first term. I feel that I've successfully completed my first term. I have more things that I want to do. I want to, uh, th there's some other things that I, I want to do with regard to City Hall, making, making your business at City Hall a little bit more convenient with the City Hall to go van. There's information about that that I can share with you. If you'd like to contact me, I can be reached um, via email. It's probably the easiest way because then I, I can write it down. Uh, it's SMB, as in Shana Marie Barnes, number four, 
counsel at gmail.com. You can also contact me via cell phone. It's 508-680-6914. Um, feel free, contact me. I hope, hopefully I will um, be reelected on the 22nd. I'm number eight on your ballot. And um, you can also hashtag on social media, got my vote. Okay, got my vote. There you <laughs> go. Um, you're watching Democratically Speaking. Uh, Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more events.